you asked for this. In my last video, I tried to convince you not to make your own programming language, but enough of you seemed interested in doing it anyway that I'll just go ahead and go in a little more detail about the process. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the step that's the tokenizer or lexer. And as part of that, I'm gonna go over how text is stored on your computer in the source file, and then go over what a tokenizer does, how it breaks up the text into small pieces, as well as finite state machines as a way to make the tokenizer, as well as go over the code that I wrote for my programming language. So let's get into it. So a text file on a computer is really just a sequence of numbers. I mean, everything on a computer is a sequence of numbers. So if I have this alphabet here, A, B, C, D, every letter is going to have a number associated with it. And so you can see a lowercase a is the number 97, and then the alphabet continues to there, 98, 99. So in this very simple example of a text file here, this would just be a sequence of numbers 97, 98, 99, 100. This would be a text file that contains A, B, C, D, space, D. And for the sake of this video, we're just gonna assume that every letter is only eight bits wide. So we're not gonna go into Unicode encoding. And so we have these inputs of just numbers and we want to actually break this up into meaningful pieces of information. So let's jump over to my tokenizer written in Python here. We don't want to be viewing all of these individual letters. We want to break it apart into meaningful pieces. So for example, I have this word DEF, or it's a keyword, and we want to treat that as one piece. And then we want to skip the white space. And then right here, I have a function name and I want all of that to be in one piece. And then I want to treat this open parenthesis separately. Then I have another name current, and then I a colon, and then white space, and then the keyword str, close parenthesis, colons. I want those pieces, not just the individual letters. So that's what a tokenizer does, is it takes these individual letters and breaks it apart into meaningful things, such as identifiers, strings, numbers, symbols, and that makes it much easier for the next step, the parser, which we'll go over in another video, to understand what the language is trying to say. And whenever I write tokenizers, I base it around finite state machines. What is a finite state machine? So a finite state machine, kind of as the name implies, is there's a finite number of states, and it's a machine that can transition between these states. So this machine is only ever in a single state at a time. And there are certain conditions that if they're met, you transition to another state and then to another state. And the way, the way the rules work about transitioning between states is what determines the behavior of the finite state machine. So how does this apply to parsing a text file? The states will roughly correspond to each to a different token type in our tokenizer. So there'll be one for an identifier. Identifiers are essentially words. They have letters, underscores, and numbers, but they can't start with a number. So back in the Python example, that's the def or the name of functions. Those are all identifiers. You might also have a state for the colon character or a state for the parentheses or one for numbers. Whenever we step to the next character inside of our stream of numbers, our, our text file, it will, will transition from state to state. What does this look like in practice? Let's tokenize this line. First, we have to determine which state we start in. So we'll look at the first character and we'll say, oh, this is a letter. And so I'm gonna make this the default state. So we jump to the ID state if it's a letter. And now we're in the ID state with the D. And so we go to the next letter, the next character and see, oh, that is also a letter. And so we'll actually have the state machine just go back to itself if it's still a letter. And in this case, also it can be an underscore and a number actually. So that keeps it in the identifier state. And so we, we stay in the identifier state with E, then F, and then once we hit white space, we will actually, go, we will transition out of the identifier state and then we actually will transition straight into the white space state 
and I will show how that structured my code in a bit. Just to make this diagram a little less crazy, I'm going to have it point back to default state and the default state immediately goes back out to white space if we see a white space character. So now when we're in the white space, we enter this state, but there's an important thing on this edge as we come back to the default state from the identifier state, this is when we emit a token. That's important because when we first started scanning the identifier, we started here at D and then we got to the white space and that's where we ended. So now we can say, oh, let's just take the range of characters while we were in this identifier state and output this as an identifier token. So after we've been there, we're now in the white space state and we move to underscore and well, that's not white space. I'll go ahead and draw this little line here. That's, that's not white space. And so we're gonna transition back again for anything else that's not white space. And wouldn't you know it, that is an underscore, which actually sends us back to the identifier state. So we're gonna start a new token here and we move over underscore N-A-M-E, those are all letters. So we stay in this state and we hit this open parenthesis. So that'll transition us back here and that now emits another token. And then we hit this parenthesis. And so these ones are very simple. We, we enter the state when we see a parenthesis, but it's just gonna always immediately go back on the next letter, no matter what it is, because we know this is a single length token. So that just immediately returns. And so we'll emit another token here for open parenthesis, another token for close parenthesis, and the same thing applies to this colon. It's also a single character token. Now we've taken our stream of DEF space underscore NAME parentheses colon. We've turned that into DEF, which is an ID, followed by a space, which is white space, followed by underscore name, which is also an ID, followed by open parentheses, close parentheses, colon, you get the idea. So the tokenizer state machine has transformed this into the list of tokens, which we'll need in our next step. One thing I know people are gonna be mentioning is there are libraries and probably just about any language you want that will do this step for you where you can define your programming language with a very simple description and the library will do this step for you and turn them all into tokens. So, why did I write my own? Um, well, I have a really bad habit of just not using anybody else's code, but I have a better reason for this particular project, and that's because I need this to run inside of Blender as a Python plugin. As far as I know, there's no built-in Lexer for Python, and so I'd have to use some third-party library, and I don't want to have to figure out how to get that installed as part of the plugin. I don't even know if you can, but I didn't want to bother with that. I just wrote it myself because as you can see, it's not even 160 lines. It's not actually that difficult to write one of these. But let's just jump into it. I'm not going to go line by line. Um, you can hopefully glean that. If you have questions, let me know in the comments. But let's just talk about the important bits. So I initialize the state here. Last start specifies the start of the current token. I grab the next character that I want to parse here, and I pass that into the current state, and it gives me the next state. And if I emit a token, you can see here, I append that token to the result. I take where the last token started to the current position in the string to get the value of the token. And then I set the start of the next token to be where we currently are in the string, so that way the next time the token gets emitted, we emit starting from the end of the last one. And then I set the state from to be what the, the last state told me to make it. And then I always at the end add this little end of file token as a way to make the parser a little bit easier. But that's basically the gist of it though. You can see this is not a very complicated function here. And to define the state machine, we now have to find all these functions that are the states. So let's just look at the default state first. So you can see 
just big long list here and it says if if the current character is white space then we return the white space state if it's a letter or underscore then an identifier so on and so forth you can see there are a good number of states i do want to call out there's this one special group of tokens single character tokens you can see any of these tokens here that are single characters you can see plus minus parentheses all of these are always just single characters so i do a special line here so i don't have to do a separate if statement for all of them but why do i not do that for these ones like a a dot or equal sign the equal sign actually could possibly two different tokens if it's just a single equal sign that's the assignment operator but if it's two of them together that's the equal operator so what does a state machine look like for this equal well let's just draw we have the default state and then if we see an equal sign we transition to this equal state and so once we're in this state the next character if it's another equal sign then we enter into the double equal state if it's anything else other than the equal sign we transition back to the default state we emit the equal token and then once we're into the double equal state well there's no other token that could be after this so this will just always emit the token for double equals what does that look like in code let's come back to the assigner equal state so we can see first we check the case so if it's an equal we transition to the emit token state and we have, and this is telling it to just on the next character no matter what it is emit this token type double equals but if it's not an equal sign, then we transition back to the next character based on the default state. Whatever the character happens to be, if it's white space or identifier, the default state will determine what state we should go to next, and we emit the assignment operator token. So that's what that looks like, and all of these have something like that, like less than, less than, less than or equal to, um, those kinds of things. And between this little loop here and all of these different states that I have, I'm able to break up my text file into tokens. So that's basically it for the tokenizing step. I will be talking about the parser and the stack machine in later videos. So subscribe if you want to follow that. And I always am appreciative of the Patreon supporters for this channel. Uh, I really am wanting to finish this N64 game to be something you can play on hardware and your support makes it possible. So thank you. And until next time, take care.